Well, welcome Roy along Bandon, to the 2023 Bandon, European Para Table Bandon, Tennis Championships Bandon, here Bandon, in Sheffield, Bandon, England, Bandon, with the entire tournament being staged at the wonderful Bandon, English Bandon, Institute Bandon, as well, the home, of course, the of the British Para Table Tennis. My name is Elliot Stockdown. Alongside me in the commentary team today, Anthony, the former cerebral palsy world champion. So, first of all, how are you? And welcome along. How are you? Yeah, I'm excited to, to get on the way. We've got six days of uh, our table tennis. Incredibly excited to be here. And of course, we're here in your home city, Sheffield. Absolutely, really. it's a fantastic setup as well. Um, this is obviously the home of um, the Paralympic GP uh, team. And um, years ago, this is where I trained and honed all my skills. But we've got a new set of players today, it's 2023, and they're all looking to try and get the uh, golden ticket to qualify for um, Paris 2024. Yeah, there's a huge prize on offer. 267 competitors from 35 countries will all be attempting to secure their participation, like you say, at Paris 2024. 22 athletes from the single events can qualify for Paris from this championship over the six days, which will feature singles and doubles competitions from 11 different classes five for wheelchair five for standing athletes and one for athletes with an intellectual impairment today like i said is it's a one we've got matches running from 9 a.m all the way through to 7 p.m so be rest assured of being plenty of action coming your way if you're wanting to pop on down to Sheffield to uh, see the Paratable Tennis live, then tickets are available online via the British Paratable Tennis website or at the venue for tickets costing £12 for the entire day. I do believe we're about ready to get off and underway in this opening game. We have GB's Aaron McKibben and the Netherlands' Roy Vandenberg facing up against each other. McKibben, number five in his class at the moment. How do you think he's going to fare up in this first game? Well, I think Aaron, you know, he's trained well. It'll be expected um, to win. He, he's playing at a high level. He's been um, part of the GB setup now for over 10 years. And, um, you know, he's improved his ranking. He's, at the moment, he's number five. I think he's been as high as four. But um, he's a very explosive player, very powerful, um, quite tall. Um, he has a range of shots that... Uh, you know, um, he can actually be a bit creative and, um, you know, hopefully we'll see some of that today. Yeah, there's a 10-year age gap here between McKibben and Vandenberg with uh, the GB player at 32 years of age. Do you think that sort of maturity and that experience is going to come into play in this opening game? Possibly, um, but I think um, in terms of, uh, you know, Aaron, he'll just take it and, you know, point at a time. And he'll, you know, hopefully get into his swing, and we'll see the best of both players basically um, playing the best table tennis. And uh, hopefully, Aaron, you know, he's setting off um, with the GB team. He's the first player on, so we're wanting a good start. And in terms of, you know, if we do have any new viewers of this sport, as they're potentially trying to get into a new sport, ready for next year's Olympics, how does it all work? How many points are on offer? How does someone win? Right, OK, well, it's um, the best of five games up to 11. Um, the, the, there is, if it gets to 10 all, um, you have to win by two clear points. Um, so um, this is a class eight um, a match. So there are six, five um, standing classes plus an intellectual class, which is class 11. And there are five wheelchair classes as well. So, and that's based on um, the mobility of the players as well. So you see quite a lot of different disabilities um, on offer, well, when, um, on, you know, in sort of um, in play. So as you can see, the, the guy from Netherlands is, you know, he's got a prosthetic leg, um, but obviously he's, mo he's obviously worked hard with the mobility. Um, and Aaron has got what his disability is actually, um, but he has problems with his feet. Um, so his feet are a bit clawed. There is a name for it, I don't know. it just escapes me at the moment. But it looks about they were ready to start, so um, let's see, how, it, see what, how it happens. 
Well, well best of luck to both players. So we are officially off and underway then. Already one point being shared between the two. Nice start so far. It's a great backhand from Aaron. Yeah, Aaron will be looking to get in wherever possible. Um, he's quite an you know attacking player, so he'll you know use his serves, utilize his serves to get in. Some nice returns there, and unfortunately for McKibben, he's go straight into the net there. Brunenberg, right on. That's a great serve from Aaron then. Just to just pop into it now. It's been Bundenberg to serve. Again, he's had a very strong start here. And the score leading 5 1 then to Vandenberg. Potentially catching the uh, GB athlete just a little bit of guard at the moment. So he's just gone to retrieve the ball. And both players just having just a momentary break. And we get back up and go away. That's a great serve from Aaron. Lots of backspin on the ball then to take a 5 2 lead. I suppose Rally down. That was a fantastic return. Which puts Lindenberg under a little bit of pressure to concede that point. Down the score leads. That's a great feeling from Aaron then. Just a couple of those delicate shots going in. They've had a few fast paced rallies already, but taking the pace down a bit and in his own pace. A great serve down the line from Aaron, just switching it up. He's been cross court and he's gone down the line and caught um, the Dutch player out. Again, straight into the net there from the Dutchman. It's a 9 3 the score. So Aaron, um, McK Aaron McKibben's got a great range of serves that um, can fool his opponent and he's utilised those so far. It was a fantastic return there. Full of pace, velocity. That's uh, Lefvandenberg in an awkward position now. Score at 10-3, one more point. First game will go to McKibben. And indeed he does get it. And that's a great start from McKibben. He's done really well there. Yeah, that was the start he would have wanted and he would have been dreaming about. Absolutely. He's spoken the build-up coming up to this. That he's so excited to be able to play a home tournament. I think it's the first home tournament, actually, for the uh, Power of Table Tennis since 2012, I want to say, since the actual uh, London Olympics. So it's a really nice moment for uh, the GB players to be able to play in front of their family and friends and for him to win that first game by 11 points to three he'd be absolutely delighted it's uh, some promising signs though there from uh, Vandenberg he uh, turned a couple of those serves quite well but maybe he just needs a bit more time to warm up get himself into the game maybe get to the pace that's uh, the Kipster as he's known as 
uh, was playing at. So, Kevin Osbert discussed. He's one of the best in his rank number five at the moment compared to Vandenberg's 39. A bit more experience on his side. Yeah, Aaron Rogue looking to capitalise on his first game there and just uh, keep the pressure on um, Vandenberg. Yeah. Uh, last tournament that uh, he's both played at was this year, 2023. Vandenberg went off to Montenegro with McKibben going off to Slovenia. Both of them had recent match practice. So we get off and underway. Second game and fantastic start already. Again, that pace just too much for Vandenberg on the return. McKibben leads. Pace again, and yeah, a good combination there from Aaron. Um, a, a good backhand and a, and a finishing forehand, brilliant. And just bouncing off and out of play. Still strong here from McKibben. Three to the good. Fantastic start to the second round. Fantastic return there. Oh, so unfortunate from Vandenberg. He leapt for it. Nearly got there. In fact, he did get there, but of course, just smashing it into the net. Very unfortunate. <laughs> he doesn't look particularly best pleased there. I just thought the fact he just won the point. lose his first point of the match there smashing it into the net a little bit too low so the Dutchman does get a point back in his favour that's great from Aaron putting pressure on the um, Dutch players backhand um, he's very good at switching play Aaron but he's also very good at putting pressure on the other opponent to, to make sure that he gets the ball that he wants to finish the point that's something that he would have been preparing for for this first game because he's got so many competitors to face but it's something that may have just looked at to try and force errors in that way yes yes definitely no. and that was a great top spin there from Vandenberg lots of lots of uh, rotation on the ball and Aaron just put it off the table Crooking himself back into this now after what was a really strong start from Aaron. Oh, it's just slightly like creeping back into it. And the two points separate them at the moment. Oh. Just clips off the net there. It always seemed. Very pleased with that uh, rally and that result. So the line of action. Now that's a fantastic. It oh. is. Um, it, Aaron played a shot down the line there, there just um, just switching it up because he's been playing into the diagonal and he's just gone straight down the line and that's what they're in the training they're taught to do diagonal as well as down the lines. Strengthening that there from the serve. It's just has a little bit more respite. And a bit more breathing room. Oh, a lot of power went behind that. Almost uh, stumbling Vandenberg backwards a few yards there. It's uh, Fantastic return, and uh, well, given off to a bit of a rocky 
middle patch to this uh, second game is managed to get himself a few more points than these by 8 four. So every six points they're allowed to towel down and take sweat off the um, bat and everything. So every six points they're allowed to towel down. Frustrating himself there. McKibben smashing into the net. That's a great topspin. It had the same action, but he kept, he put topspin on the ball as opposed to backspin, and that's why it went off the table. Again, unfortunate there. To serve. And off that goes, and I do believe that is match point, and McKibben does lead by two to zero. Even five, Victor there. Once again, not a strong start and a strong end. Getting that middle patch a little bit. No, no, just started to make a few more mistakes and allow Vandenberg just to come back into it. Yeah, it's um, it's a strange game table tennis. Because Vandenberg, obviously, I don't know if he's, you know, he hasn't got as much experience as Aaron, so he may have been a bit nervous in the first game. Mm. Um, and obviously, you know, he, he he got back into the game, but towards the end, he made a couple of errors with his serve, and and that's because obviously he wants to try and keep the ball as tight as possible so that Aaron can't get him. Um, but Aaron will be happy that he's two games to the good right now. So. Um, you know, for the Dutch player to win, he's going to have to win three games now. Yeah, so it's an incredibly tough and uphill battle, but there are definitely positives here for the Dutchman Vandenberg. Like you say, he's a young lad. Unbelievable, he played his first tournament nine years ago. Right. <laughs> as a 12-year-old, but of course, your experience as a 12-year-old compared to when you're 22 and 21, completely different. Yes. But, uh, yeah. you know, of course, with the Olympic potentially on the line here, okay. you'll be eyeing up Paris. And uh, he's up against uh, one of the best in the world at the moment in yeah. this uh, in this eighth class, Aaron McKibben. So, yeah, there's positive state. He's just having a few words with his coach and he's ready to go again now. When well, you say in 2012, Aaron was winning his first Paralympic uh, medal in 2012. So, well, there we go. There. <laughs> there's the absolute difference. Absolutely. Vandenberg to get his back and underway. In the middle. And he does win the first point. That will do the world of good for his confidence there. He serves back on point. And he's by one to zero. And that was a good heavy push from Aaron then. Um, he pushed it really deep into the, um, the Dutchman's forehand to make the error. And again, one of those power shots. And actually not too sure what's I happened there. I don't he know what happened there. Sort of <laughs> seemed as if McKibben had won the point. And then all of a sudden the ball just sort of re-landed on the table. Yeah. It's 2-1. Uh, I believe that point did go to Vandenberg. It is a strange point. I was just consulting the referee. Potentially, like he's saying, it was the height of the serve. And he's giving the ball to Vandenberg to serve, so, so the, it's I all happening here in this first yeah, set. Yeah, it looks like he gave um, <laughs> McKibben a, a, a service fault. it's come back over just unsettled um, Aaron just a little bit that's yeah, all he looks pretty uncomfortable at the moment and that's allowing the Dutchman just to slowly come back into this now as he's growing in confidence which is why he's doing shots like that that's it uh, just concede that one so now we're coming back into it 
two four the score. I say after six points, they can just have a quick towel break. How important is it just to wipe down and just essentially remove the sweat off your hands? How important actually is that for these players? Well, yeah, if you get your rubber wet, the ball will just drop off the rubber. Yeah. So you've got to try and make sure that the, the rubber's dry. They call it a mini rally there. Six or seven returns. Kevin so feeling a bit unsettled. Has managed to get himself back into it with the score for all. Yeah. And um, that's been a timeout called by um, Vandenberg. Um, now every 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 sort of game, they're allowed one time out for a minute, where they're allowed to break up the game and and just he's gone back to his coach for a bit of advice and guidance, or just to break the fact that Aaron won the last two points. And yeah, like we said, Wannenberg had that really strong start on Seppel, McKibben in a little bit, but then, of course, now with it four four, nice. I feel like it's a sensible time just to call him over. With a, chat have you know reassessed because like you say if he does lose this set he has lost the game and at the moment there'll be optimism in the Dutch camp that they, uh, they can get at least a result in this set which will uh, set him up nicely for of course the remainder of the game so McKibben's already back at the table he's eager and ready to go Vandenberg now just coming over and that chat with his coach serves was across and then that was a great there. backhand from Vandenberg then set himself up nicely with the serve and played a backhand winner there we go again now once again in the lead tries sort of an audacious looping shot back that does uh, miss the table and we're back level at 5 all. And there was lots of spin from Vandenberg then. Just Aaron just put the ball off the table. Oh, that is a fiery shot and a half from Aaron McKibben. Taking no prisoners there. Absolutely smashing it back. Great return from Aaron there with his backhand. Again, Van der Berg looks frustrated with that shot. Yeah, the two point lead, and, and Aaron's, Aaron's clawed it back, so it's, it's a very strange game, this. Very strange game at the moment. Third time actually. Kevin's brought it back in this game after being two points down. So actually led. Yeah, and then, well, I say that he eventually does with a fantastic <laughs> shot. Yeah, brilliant forehand. Vandenberg did not see that coming at all. And now he's under pressure as he trails. 8 7. Go. Already back level. Coming frustrated there, straight into the net. Like you say, a bit of a strange game this. Sort of and forwards no one's real really got a massive foothold in it at the moment no one's really taking the game by the scruff of the neck no oh, good That's rally a brilliant there. rally absolutely fantastic brilliant and, he, and Aaron tied him up in the backhand it was a great, I think that's the longest rally of the game so far. Absolutely. So 
and then back in front. Nine points to eight. Right. And again, that was well, good, well placement from Aaron right into the uh, Vanderberg's uh, middle. So he didn't know whether he could play a forehand or a backhand. They call that sort of area the crossover because you can either play a forehand or a backhand, but you can get caught in no man's land. So you don't know which one to play. Well, we've uh, one point left to play here. McKibben can wrap it up. Front of oh. the home crowd. But those celebrations from Vandenberg. We'll have to wait. Yeah. Oh, the Kibster. So Vandenberg's going to fight for this. He, you know, he knows he, if he loses this game, that's it. He's all over. So um, he's only, you know, Aaron's only one point in front. And that's a great finish from Aaron. Yeah, Vandenberg frustrated, but definitely positives there. He grew as the game went on. Yeah. From that first set, 11-3, then 11-5, and then to finish with 11-9. Fantastically done though from McKibben who does win in this opening game for GB in front of the home crowd you mentioned in the build-up how much he was looking forward to being able to play in front of his family that can't always come across to wherever it is in the world these tournaments are taking place but in this first game between McKibben and Vandenberg three straight sets and it is GB that beat the Dutch
Well, welcome back then for the second game here on at Table 6. And what an absolute pleasure it is to have William John Bailey taking on Sam Carl Gustafsson, the number one in the world, world champion, Paralympic champion in 2016, 2022 World Para Table Tennis champion. William John Bailey is here, the 35-year-old, to take on the very fresh-faced and young Sam Carl Gustafsson. Once again, I have Farrell Anthony alongside me. So, just in the build-up to this as they're preparing and, of course, going into their warm-ups, we were saying just off-air that Bailey is the absolute favourite for this tournament. So, surely he should be the absolute favourite for this first game for him. Uh, yes, and he, but Will won't be taking it easy on anybody. He'll be really focused. He's very um, focused on what he needs to do. And he won't be taking any, um, well, he'll be taking no prisoners, but he won't be complacent. Um, you know, Will, I started playing with Will in 2006 when he first started and he's he just progressed and, you know, he's now world number one. And uh, he's world number one for a reason, because he is the best. And, um, you know, I don't think, I think in the last year, I don't think he's lost a tournament in the last sort of five or six competitions he's played he's won them all and um, you know he's he's just on this relentless journey to try and win everything that he can oh well, yeah in terms of minor medals this year he won the Slovenia Para Open in the singles and then he went over and also won the US Para Open in both the singles and the doubles so like you say he's on a relentless winning streak and he'll be coming into this I feel like hoping that he should be winning this tournament of course like you say he's not going to be complacent but based off form and based off what we know of him he should absolutely be going far in this tournament and heading of course to uh, the Paralympics next year in Paris yes and um, you know it's a, it's a good it's a good start for him this game um, the you know Staffson is, is very young he's only been playing um, internationally I think since he was about 13 so um, in terms of Will, he, you know, he's been playing maybe well, since 2006, so 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's, there's a considerable age gap between these 16 years, 35 and 19. So, I said the fresh face, Gustafsson. Yeah, uh, might be a pushover though. Like I say, he's been playing for six years, won his first medal, albeit a minor medal, back in 2017, the first year that he was playing. But... How do you think he'll be feeling in that, uh, in that Swedish camp? It's your first game of the European tournament and you're up against the world champion. Are you happy about that because you get to test yourself against the best or would you have preferred maybe a bit of an easier start? Well, it is what it is. So, you know, he's got drawn against Will, and it, but he'll give it his best shot. Um, the Swedes, are, I mean, you know, they are, they're a very good nation for table tennis. Um, they've got a history of having some good players, so... Um, you know, if he doesn't, if he goes on um, believing that he can win, then he, he's got a chance. But Will can be quite um, intimidating at times. Um, and like I say, he's got the experience as well, so he knows, you know, he knows his way around the table. So, but hopefully, you know, he'll he'll start well, and um, this will be another, um, you know, good start for GB as 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 a camp. Well, he's had to deal with a lot, has William John Bailey. He suffered cancer at age seven. And then over the years, as he's got himself involved with paratable tennis, like you say, starting in 2006, he then suffered, of all things, knee ligament damage uh, after being on Strictly Come Dancing, uh, of all things. So he's managed to recover from that again, just to bounce back and get himself into the groove. How much is that sort of the testament of how great of a person he is but how resilient he is and how will that come across in the way he plays yeah I mean Will loves table tennis and he you know he's got himself back fit and well I mean he's probably um, playing the best table tennis of his life and I think after an injury when you come back I mean some injuries can be you know can end people's careers so when you get a second chance you, you know you, you, you want to make the most of it and that's what Will's done and they'll be looking forward to getting off and underway as we are about to here. GB versus Sweden. Second game of the day here at the Institute for Sport in Sheffield. 
And it is the GB man who gets us underway with a nice serve. Starson can't quite flick it back in time. So already the early point goes to Bailey. An, an interesting fact about Will, he, he plays with two different rubbers, two different surfaces, so they get, he gets different spins on the ball. So his, um, his forehand is smooth and his um, backhand is what we call medium pimples. And um, he can get a different range of spin and just to fox his opponent. Fantastic rally taking place here. And still onwards it goes. Fantastic returns each time. And that's brilliant Starson. from Bailey. He's very good at just making a player play another shot. And, um, you know, in Will's mind, if he plays, um, if his opponent plays 14 shots, he'll play 15 to win the point. Uh, he does lose the point out there. Still will give 19 year old Gustafsson a little bit of hope. This has been a relentless start, though, from Bailey. And that's a great forehand cross court from Bailey as well. So, once again, they're just taking a quick towel break with 5 1 at the score. This has been the start we all kind of expected from Bailey in this opening set. Oh, and Will just got lucky there, just hit, clipped the edge. Yeah, just right on the edge, pretty much on the white line, just off of it. Clips, comes off, because Darson's side. There's a bit of a confusion now saying, here. Now they're saying it hit the side of the table, if it's hit the side of the table then it'll be a point to the Swede. And I do believe it has gone to the Swede, Gustafsson has hit the side of the table. So 5-2 the score. And Will's not argued, he just get on with it. He's just gone on with it. The service error there from the Swede. Oh, that's heavy spin from Will Bailey. Very good. How difficult is that? You say, you know, you've played with him, of course, it was many years ago, but how difficult is that just to be able to reply to when you put that much on it? Well, it's because, of, you know, it, it, the different variations of speed and spin and height of the ball, you have to judge that and you haven't got long to make it, make the, sh the shot. Going into the net there. So it's been positive all round at the moment for the GB player. As we march on with another serve from Gustafsson. Turns it well. Just not quite That's again. a great punch from Bailey into the um, backhand of the Swede. Oh. I believe that's a point there to Gustafsson again. I think service fault. Yeah, I think Will, he, he was saying that the referee pointed out that he didn't throw it up um, the required 15 centimetres. Or six inches in old money. <laughs> <laughs> well, match, well, set point, should I say, here for Will. Well, he does indeed win it. And that's a good start for the man from Great Britain. Yeah, that would be the start. You would have hoped a few, maybe, mistakes slipping in there with that potential service fault. But it's the first game of the tournament. You know, it's going to take a sometimes a little while to warm up. We saw that in the first game between McKibben of GB and Vandenberg of the Netherlands, and we've seen that again here. 
That uh, first set does go to Will Bailey. All right, 11-2-4. Promising signs there, there from uh, Gustafsson. At, uh, at times he managed to rally quite well and respond to whatever Bailey was uh, throwing at him. Yeah, he has to, I mean, Gustafsson, he's obviously young, but he made a lot of unforced errors and against somebody like Will Bailey, you can't make them, you can't give them points. You've got to make them play. And that's, that was the major difference. You know, he made t two or three uh, unforced errors and in a game up to 11, that's a lot. So it will be the Swede to get us underway then in this second set. Bailey poised, bouncing around. And a nice central rally there. Into the net it goes. Oh, showed a great combination there, like you were saying. Switching up paddle around, trying to get it on that pimple side. But then right at the last minute, we'll change it back just to force those errors once again. And that's relentless top spinning from Will Bailey, moving him, moving the ball around um, so that Gustafsson couldn't get comfortable about where the ball was going as well. And it looks as though the... Um, Is that the first time out called? Yeah, so early as well. It's in the second game, um, but Bailey's got a 3-0 lead. And obviously the coach, has, uh, the Swedish coach has seen something that he wants his um, player to do to stem the points that are being won by Bailey. The thing about timeouts is as well is that you, the timeout's a minute, but if the player who calls the timeout comes back after 30 seconds, the opposing player has to come back after 30 seconds as well. Okay. So, in this instance at least, it is Bailey having to do the waiting around, and he'll be eager just to get back and underway. Yes. He's had a very solid second set so far, and he's up now to serve. It's another unforced area from the Swede, unfortunately. And so Bailey goes 4 0 up. Lucas Darson's got to do something special here in this second set to come back. So it was very clever from Will then. He played it into the uh, Swede's backhand and then played it into his forehand. Just moving the ball around. That's and that's a strong return. finish. Absolutely fantastic. Smashes it to Gustafsson's right. So much pace on that. And with six to the good. Over just for one of those quick towel breaks. This could be a whitewash though from Bailey. Six to the good. And Gustafsson's got a sniff in this second set. Again, that's pretty much a carbon copy of what he just did a few seconds yeah. ago. Yeah. Fantastic shot again. Yes, he's. Um He's making sure that he doesn't lose any points. Oh, oh that's a great shot from Gustafsson then. Yeah, really, really good. Got Will on the defensive, which, you know, is a good, is a good ploy to get him actually defending. 7-1 oh, the score. 7-2 now, Bailey running into the net. How frustrated will he be that 
He's let those two punches slip away fairly easily yeah, on his standards. There'll be a bit of anger that he's made an unforced error there with his forehand especially. There's a big difference between having a forced error and an unforced error. And the, the last shot, Will made an unforced error. He'd call that an unforced error in his forehand. But then he's just made a brilliant serve. One to the score. In this second set, it's looking good for GB's Bailey. Well, as I say that, just sort of mixes the panel, just clips the edge of it. Yeah. Just missed on the flight of the ball. Well, he's just quickened the pace on those three shots then. Made um, the Swede hurry his shots. Of course, we have less time to think. We have more time to make mistakes, which is exactly what's just happened there. And exactly why Will Bailey is... Two sets to none in the second game of the day. So now Gustafsson is in a difficult situation, exactly the same, funny enough, as Rory Vandenberg, where he's got no choice now but to throw the kitchen sink at it because if he loses this next set, that's him out of this game. Yeah. So both players just having a quick word with their coaches. Yeah, so between each game, you're allowed a minute. Each player's allowed a minute in between each game, as well in addition to the timeout. Well, it's already returned, and again, it is a Swede that's not, not particularly slow to come back to the table, but he just wants a little bit more time with his coach. Yeah, he'll be utilising the full minute, yeah. whereas Will, you know, he knows what he's doing and, you know, he doesn't need that full minute from his coach. He knows what he has to do. A bit of a slower pace there in that set. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, point. that's the beauty of the rubber that he's got with the pimples. It slows the ball down, takes all the pace off the ball at times. He's using a little combination of them both there, just going from black to red, black to red. Turn shot there. He just missed the table though, Will, just then. He just missed the table. Yeah, that is 3 1 to Baylor then in this third set. Goes to four again. Gustafsson's frustrated. Speaking to his coach from a distance there. And again, those just fast paced returns when they do indeed at the table. Oh, difficult for Gustafsson just to deal with him. It's very difficult for the Swede at the moment because um, Will's not making many errors. He's actually winning a lot of the points. And so it's hard for the Swede to get into the game. Um, with each point being gained by the great British athlete in Bailey, he'll just grow more and more in confidence. Rated there, just batting the ball away. Yeah, he just missed the ball completely. Yeah. It's those kind of errors that just Bailey hasn't done in this game. 
which is why he's in such a sizeable lead in this third set. It's just, it's just relentless pressure from Bailey all the time. He's not giving the Swede anything. There's a little rally going on here. Both of them completely different sort of spectrums in terms of closest to the table. Gustafsson, a couple of metres away at the least, but Bailey really touched tight to the table and how does that sort of change your shot and your stance well, how, how does that, how's that come yeah in terms of that will will just make sure that the the swede can't get back to the table good stuff is going to struggle then because um you know bill's always going to be favorite when he's away from the table and it's like the game slipping away from Gustafsson now eight three at the score three more points and bailey will have this opening game wrapped up all nice with a little cherry on top as well. And he's just made another unforced error, Gustafsson. And that's been the difference in the yeah. game. Uh, Will's just not made any errors and Gustafsson's made a lot. He's made a lot of unforced errors. Do you think that's potentially pressure getting to him in this game? It is, and he's probably, you know, he's probably going to be nervous. It's his first game. I mean, mm. he's got another couple of group games as well to play, so... Um, I'm not saying he wouldn't have expected to beat Will Bailey, but he knew it would be a bit difficult game. And his final point then. And he's really trying to force it home. Yeah. He misses the table there though, so... And five. And again, he just made an unforced error. Well, it's been the story of this game so far. Bailey on top, Gustafsson. Made one too many errors in this game. Which is why the game now ends with 11-5 and three sets to none for Gustafsson. And that is yeah. pretty much the perfect start. For Bailey, yeah, an it? accomplished performance from Will. He'll he'll be happy with that. Um, you know, he made a couple of unforced errors, but we're happy with the game and that he's, you know, he's able to get off and, um, you know, prepare for his next game without having too much problem. You no, know, having too many problems with um, Gustafsson this time. Yeah, and how will Gustafsson go forward from this? There were a few positive signs, but like we said, a lot of those unforced errors creeping in and. We don't really want that to damage his confidence going forward. No, well, what he'll do is he'll go back to the practice hall with his coach and he'll he'll practice, you know, his shots again and just to make sure that he, you know, he cuts down on the unforced errors. Because it, it's difficult enough, you know, playing the game, but if you're making unforced errors, it, it makes it more difficult. Well, following on from this game, then we'll move on to the women's category with Alexa Sitak taking on Arlene Shinkarova. Hungary versus Ukraine. I thought we'd be coming up for you in a short while.
Martin Nicol from England. On table five, men's singles, class four. Christoph Zilka from Poland. George Emilian Florescu from Romania. The umpire is Alan Thomas from England. On table six, women's singles, class nine. Alexa Svitaks from Hungary. Irina Shinkaparova from Ukraine. The umpire is Anna Beja Puet from Germany. On table seven, men's singles, class seven, Björn Schneid from Germany. And Thomas Rosnast from Switzerland. The umpire is Paul Nichols from England. On table eight, men's singles, class seven, Kevin Daubecker from France, Christian Scheiber from Austria. The umpire is Joanna Alfwaite from England. On table nine, men's singles, class seven, Ben Ashok Despino from Belgium, Patrick Vaughan from Ireland. The umpire is David Edwards from England. On table 10, men's singles, class seven, Havao Josic from Croatia, Ada Baha from Israel. The umpire is Benny Sambo from Sweden. On table 11, men's singles, class seven, Michal Dexler from Poland, Theo Fisher from Great Britain. The umpire is Eric Bergesetter from Norway. On table 12, women's singles, class nine, Neslihan Kavas from Turkey, Mejana Lusik from Croatia. The umpire is Josh well, welcome Reynolds. back then here to table six. This is the women's single class nine in group one here at the International Table Tennis Federation 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships. Bit of a tongue twister, but we got through it. Uh, well, up now then here in the third game of the day, we have Hungary versus Ukraine. Alexa Sitak taking on Irina Shinkolova. In terms of who we actually have playing, besides so from their names, Sitak's 33-year-old Hungarian. She is currently number three in her class, but the best rank she had was early this year, back in May 2023, when she was number one in the world. Major titles for her include the 2020 World Paratable Tennis Championships, so world champion is no mean feat at all. And also, she won this exact championships, the Euro Championships, back in 2019. As for Sheen Karlova of Ukraine, only 18 years old. So, a 15-year age gap between our two competitors here. Currently number 12 in Class 9. So, doing relatively well for her young age. She's been playing since the age of 13. And, well, her latest tournament that she played in was the... Czech Para Open, where she picked up the silver in the singles class 9 to 10. And then she also managed to pick up the bronze in the mixed doubles class as well. So, potentially a good game on the cards here. Yes, there is, of course, a wealth of experience for one and not so much the other. But both of them will be wanting to do their absolute best to get to the 2024 Paralympics in Paris. Alexa Sitak will be absolutely hoping that she goes far in this tournament, be it the semi-finals, final, or even further than that in terms of winning that gold. But as for the Ukrainian Shinkarova, it's a bit unsure really what she'll be aiming for. She'll definitely be hoping to come in to this tournament with at least a lot of confidence in her back pocket, but it's a bit unfamiliar territory for her with the Olympics on the horizon. She did manage to get through the qualification for the Paralympics back in Tokyo. Unfortunately, to actually make it all the way through. So she is bidding to try and get into her first actual Paralympics in Paris 2024. 
We were a little bit behind schedule due to a couple of the other games are finishing up a little later. But we are close to getting off and underway here with both players just going through their warm-ups. A reminder of who you're listening to, I'm Elliot Stockdale. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here on day one of the European Pirate Table Tennis Championships. So it will be Shinklova to get us off and underway. Already strong rally, but unfortunately just missing the table there. Seatax takes an early lead. Started off slow that rally before building up into a little bit of momentum. Again, Seatax just managing to take that second point. Now she leads by three to not. Just mixes the ball there. That's an unforced error. A little bit unfamiliar territory for Alexa C. Sachs. That isn't something that she'll be particularly pleased about. And again, just forced into playing it into the net there. This is not really the start that she would have envisaged. And a ferocious shot back there from the Ukrainian. We'll get a bit more backspin on it. Ctex does lead by four points to two. Just got over the ball a little bit too much on the return. And that's a fantastic return there with the right. Putting it into that diagonal channel. So far, three the score. One of those straight lines there before then switching it back. She's delighted there while winning that. It clips off the net, doesn't bounce on her side. Which brings the score level to five apiece. And again, one of those unforced errors. Which uh, Farrell Anthony... He was with us for the opening game, so he's now over on table one for the wheelchair. Was as excellently out. These unforced errors just come into play, and if you start to lose two or three of those per set, you're losing pretty much a third of your points. Which is why you'll see the better players not really do it as much. Although she tacks there again, she's been a little bit. Shaking this opening set. So they're just missing the ball. So the score is now 7 6. There's a mix now at the moment of these sort of power shots coming into play. Both of them staying close to the table though at the moment. Been a very close opening set then here. Seatax leads eight to seven. Shina <laughs> Karova trying to head your way back in. She'll be really pleased with this performance so far. She does trail nine eight. But she's taking the world champion all the way through here. So 
Murphy steps up again. Turning well down that middle. Just clips off the net and off the board. No respite, neither of them taking a towel break, which you're allowed to do after every six points. go at the end of set one SeaTac does take it by 11 to 8 but really promising performance so far from the young 18 year old Ukrainian he's taken said the world champion all the way to the limits there so between each set they get one minute just to reset and have a moment with their coaches and each of them will get also get one timeout during this game just going over a few tactics, maybe discussing some of those errors that creeped into play. And that's been quite entertaining. First set so far. In the opening games this morning, it was just a whitewash for both GB players, McKibben and Bailey, as they won. Three sets to zero, respectively, against Vandenberg of the Netherlands and Gustafsson of Sweden. As they now come back to the table and get ready to go again. It's a big second set here for the Ukrainian, Shin Klorova. So it'll be Seatax to start us off again. Pretty nice simple serve there, but in the end, for a couple of hits later, she does put it into the net. Pretty much the reverse of that first point there with a couple of hits each before it goes into the net to make it one all. It's been a bit of a slow start now then to the second set by Jim Kareva. Some velocity here being hit, and that's a fantastic response there from SeaTac. Really powerful return from Shinkaleva, but then even stronger from SeaTac to win that point. Well, that was a fantastic return, really cheeky, just hit it with the red side of the paddle down the line. To make it 3 2. Right, so it's like just taking this moment now with six points gone just to go over and have a quick use of the towel. It's really important to be able to make sure that there's no sweat on the paddle, no sweat on your hands because that will completely change the trajectory of the ball. And where it goes, it's an even slightly slippier surface than you want. All of a sudden, this game becomes all the more unpredictable. Again, another fantastic rally there between these two. Two excellent players, both full of confidence by the looks of it, and really giving it their all here in this group stage match. Five for the score to SeaTax. It will be the Hungarian to serve. Oh, frustration there coming out from Shinkareva. 
She knows how important this second set is and she knows that those silly errors have got to be erased from her game in the next few points. Game head has to be on. Which is why she's managed to get that point there to make it 6-5. Only one point off a competitor at the moment. Quite been able to scoop it round there. That's Cetux. So the score 7 5 now to the Hungarian. Real positives here overall. Same also for the Ukrainian. As I say that, of course, she would hit it into the net. The commentator's curse, but she has had a really positive game. And like I said at the start, coming off the back of a silver in the Czech power open into this. We should be really quite high on confidence and really feeling good about her prospects in this tournament. Potentially not to win it. We do have some really good players here. But at the moment, taking a world number one, C-Tax. All the way here to 8-5 in uh, only the second set. She can somehow claw this back and win set two. And it's anyone's guess for the remainder of this game. So C-Tax returns. And that was a timeout given there. Wiping that paddle down again, making sure. Once again, all that sweat's gone. It's uh, but a grim thing to really think about, all that sweat dripping onto the table and on the paddles. But it's just a part of the game. These are professional athletes at the height of their game. Just giving it their all. And there again, really fast responses there with the backhand from Shinkaleva. Make it 8-6. And they're just starting to slow it down now before. A speedier response is coming. Really good rally again. Shinkaleva delighted. And she's now pulled another point back to make it 8-7. She knows how important this set is. And she has to get this next point to make it 8 all. Can she do that? Not quite this time. Cetax now comes back into it with that two-point lead. So she goes up for the serve once more. And forcing Cetax into an uncomfortable position. And then vice versa also. And this is the match point. Hasn't quite gone yet, though. 10 8 the score. It's nearly Cetax's second set here. So that's why she's pushing herself to the limit. And that is why she picks up that next point to make it 11 8 and make it two sets to none. And give the Ukrainian Rina Shinkolova a very difficult uphill battle now going into that third set. She's all got a big smile on her face though. She'll be relatively pleased with how she's done. Once again, in just in discussions with her coach. Trying to iron out any of those errors and try and fight back in the best possible manner. Well, a reminder then that if CTEX does win this next set, it is best of five. And if she does get that third set, it will be game over. That's what we've had this morning with McKibben and Bailey. It will be three in a row.
here on table six if that is the case. Well, C-Tax and Shinkarova return to the table. Give it a little quick wipe down before they prepare to go once again. Word here with the umpire. So that be about something. Just asking for the table just to be wiped down a little bit. Maybe a bit of uh, excess sweat had fallen on in that previous round. Which just seems happy enough now. So umpire retakes a seat and we're ready to get off and underway once more. Shinkleva serves. So that though, as it hits the net on the way over. First point in this third set goes to the Hungarian. And essentially here. Nina has to throw the kitchen sink at it. There's no point resting and trying to maybe like recuperate some strength going into the final few sets because if she loses this, that's it. Which is why she has to go gun home. Do what she can. In a minute though, she does trail 2-1. There's still plenty of table tennis to be played in this fixture and that's a fantastic pacey reply from SeaTax forcing Arlena into one of those errors once again and they see SeaTax going in at her best just forcing Arlena into Uncomfortable positions, forcing it onto a backhand in a position where she wouldn't have wanted to. With four on the score now, she has to really up the tempo. What she does there with a fantastic hit through that diagonal channel to make it 4 2. So she's clawing what she can back. Ready for that serve. Just to the left and back again. Clips just the edge of the table. And off. So if it clips the edge, they get the point. So the point goes to the Ukrainian, making it 4 3. Positive stuff here then from Arena as she's back now level up four all. She needs to keep this momentum up. Not like that. That is the definition of an unforced error. Where if you just miss the ball in the middle of a rally, you can't quite return it. It's a secondary ball, just entered the fray there. Didn't seem trickling across from the court over. And score 5 4 to SeaTax. Fixing on that on the way over, and then a fantastic return shot there from the Hungarian. It dropped for a perfectly. She absolutely. Whacked it into that diagonal channel, leaving Arena with no chance to respond. And that was better from the Ukrainian, fighting away back, playing Alexa in her own game. 6 5 the score. This crucial third set, We're turning it down the middle. That's fantastic once again, and a big celebration there from Arena. 
And she draws it level at six all. As they both now take a break. Really, really positive stuff from Arena. She has to keep this going to force this into a fourth set. She's got the current world number three. Buying her now at the moment. Oh, a fantastic shot from Arena just forcing SeaTax into positions where she's not comfortable in being. 8 6 the score now reads in the Ukrainians' favour. It's got to be a big second half of set three for the Hungarian. But these are fantastic rallies. Unfortunately, this time for Arena, it is Alexa who comes out on top. Misses the table there. It's a 9 7 the score reads in the Ukrainians' favour. Oh, Mara, if this does go to 10 all, first to a two point margin. So that will then play to 12 and onwards from that. And a bit of that frustration coming out, nine all the score. Max uh, has done very well to come back into this. She's a couple of points down and now finds herself back level with two points to play. And it's mistakes like that which Seatax is just managing to force out at the minute. She leads 10-9. This is a match point. She knows exactly what she'll have to do. And that is exactly why she is world number three and world champion. A fantastic game in the end, but she does come out victor 3-0 to zero against her. Ukrainian counterpart. Really promising signs though there from Arena Shinkalova. She'll be very hopeful now going into the remainder of her group games that she can compete against the best. But maybe a bit of a wake up call for Alexa Sitak, who has pushed all the way to the end there. Solid performance though. She wins by three sets to zero.
Well, welcome back then to the International Table Tennis Federation 2023 European Power Table Tennis Championships here in Sheffield. Back on table six, we are once again with the women's single. And once again, we are with class six. This is group three this time. And we have GB versus Sweden. We had that earlier this morning in the men's category where we saw... Uh, William John Bailey defeats Sam Carl Gustafsson by three sets to zero. Once again, like I say, we have GB versus Sweden as it's Lucy Picard to take on Emily Andre in class six. In terms of what we can expect from these two players, well, Emily Andre is the younger of the two, only by three years, 26 year old. She is currently ranked number nine in class six. And she's had a fairly steady 2023, it has to be said. In terms of minor medals in both doubles and singles, she's picked up three silvers and two bronzes. Hasn't quite gone to that gold level yet. She started playing back in 2013. That was her first tournament in Belgium. Whereas... Lucy with a little bit more age on her side by three years. Her first tournament was also in Belgium, but 2015. She was a bit of a late bloomer to table tennis. Well, picking up her first gold, should I say, back in 2015. Her first medal as well. Both of them will be hoping to go as far as they can in this tournament. Lucy's ranked number three in Classic, so she'll be hoping to at least push herself to the semi-finals, if not further. The 
It's been a really fun morning so far of para table tennis. We had a really, really fun game in the last match in the women's category. That was Alexa Sitak against Alina Skinarova. Hungary versus Ukraine there. And did again at three steps to zero. So, so far today, uh, I've not actually seen um, two players uh, share a set, per se. Not a 3-1, not a 3-2. Just three to zero all the way through. So the players just going through their warm-ups at the moment. This being game four. And Lucy feeling really happy just to be in front of a home crowd. It's really rare for them to be able to play at home in the UK. And last home tournament was back in 2012 at the London Olympics. They've been waiting a long time to be able to play here. So she'll be delighted. And she can do that in front of her friends and family. So we're all lined up up here on the balcony and in the stands. It's certainly filled up over the last hour or so. We've had some really good atmosphere going around. Not just for the GB players, but there's a lot of people here supporting all the different countries from Romania and Poland to, of course, Sweden and Cyprus. Well, with the wall nearly over and done with, We'll be ready to get off and underway. Lucy will feel rejuvenated and inspired by the GB performances so far today with Aaron McKibben and William Bailey both winning their games respectively. I believe now we are more or less ready to get off and underway. Best of luck to both of these players. And if you are just joining us at the start of this, a big warm welcome to you. Here in Sheffield, that first point there goes to Picard, I want to zero. Nice little rally there as Andre can see the point, one all. God has such a clever way of serving with her left arm being utilised to help her stand. She has to essentially flick the ball up with her right hand and then hit it as well. Each of these players in all the different categories have their own unique ways of serving. Some of them will hold it with their thumb and index finger. Some of them, like our last competitor on this table, Alexa Seatek will hold it on her elbow and flick it up before serving. It's been a really solid start, this, for Picard. She leaves 3-2. Andre slowly starting to get a feel for the game now and get back into it. Well, we have six points gone. Both of our players here will take the time just to go and put their hands down before returning to the table. It will be Felicity to serve. It's a little rally there, unfortunate. Just coming back off it. She read the flight of the ball. Didn't go for it. Missed the table. 
5-2 the score. Growing frustration from that Swedish camp there from Emily Andre and she graciously sent that into the net. She's got a bit of work to do to get back into it here. That was a really good serve there from Andre. She went to Picard's right. And such was the accuracy of the serve. She just couldn't quite return it. That's allowed her to get a point back into this fixture. And then again, she gets another one there. And from out of nowhere, she's already back into it. 7-4 the score. again a big roar there from Emily Andre and really under the cosh now is our GB athlete Felicity 7-5 the score and that confidence of the Swede is growing minute by minute Rally going there. Emily really seems a little bit uncomfortable using the backhand. Just forcing it on to that black side at every opportunity she can. And well, she's just lost a few points in very quick succession. And potentially is about to lose this set. Not quite though, 10-6 the score now reads. That is the Swede to serve, 10-7. There's there still life left in this set yet. Not quite there in the end. That was a really strong return back from Felicity. Which forced Emily Andre into an uncomfortable position where she just had to fire it on the diagonal. And out it went off the table. And that first set does go to Felicity Picard. I think she'll be pleased, but a little bit of work to do for number three in the world so players at the end of each set just get to have one minute with their coach just go over a few different tactics a few things and just have a chance to reset and refocus while they come back in for the next one As they switch sides, just get ready to go again. Emily Andre's had a bit of a longer wait here. She was back to the table and ready and round to go almost instantly. It will be Felicity to serve. It's a, uh, not an ideal start to second set there from the Swede a little bit slow to react this is better from her now that is a lot better she pulls herself level nice oh, end to end rally got a bit fortuitous there as it flicked off the net and as it hit the table on the way back down she gets the point No 
Nice serve there. Three on the score. Not the best of serves there from Picard. Just have to try and do better here. I believe that might have been a let, so once again she'll try. And that was better. Down the middle. But then. Once again, Andre into an error. So 4 2 the score reads. As we are nearing the midway point of this second set. Nice serve there again. Just forcing it down the middle. Centrally, and Andre with a big cheer there. Can hear that all the way up here in our commentary position. The minute she won that point, she knew. And now she screams again in delight. She pulls it back level to four all. You just scoop it over, find any angle to get it from, and then she goes again. Five four. What a brilliant three shots in a row that has now been from the Swede. Well, fortune favours the brave. She's done so well here to get herself in the lead. Can she hold on and extend it? Yes, she can. 6-4 now. Really positive stuff. In this second set. She'll go again from the serve. Well, Picard has brought it back now. Mirrors now read only one difference. 6 5 the score in favour of the Swede. Again, there's another fast paced rally. Now we are back level. That's six apiece. Both players just taking 30 seconds. in this very tight encounter. And it will be the Brit to get us back underway. And that serve already getting herself back in the lead. That is exactly what she would have wanted coming into the final part of this second set. Oh, that's a fantastic shot from Andre. Had to be really quick with those reactions. She was just flicking it there. On to the unfavoured side of Picard. To draw us back level to 7 all. She now leans again with only a points difference. Huge couple of moments this now in this game. Nice return, and again, just forcing those errors. Thank you were with us in the first couple of games this morning. Farrell Anthony was just discussing how frustrating it is for players when they are forced into these unforced errors. And Andre celebrates with a plum. She leads 9-8 now. She's a couple of points away from wrapping up this set and getting herself back into the game. Again, a nice rally taking place. Fantastic return. Oh, it's so unfortunate. She puts her arms on the table. Almost in frustration. She lost the point. Nine all the score. She has to win this point to give herself the best chance. 
He doesn't. And that allows Picard now onto a game point. If she wins this, she'll be two sets to the good. And it's always a difficult position from there. It's Andre again. That's a fantastic shot. Felicity had no chance to even respond, so we are drawn level at 10 all. And we are into a juice. So you have to win by two clear points. So far as it stands, it's first to 12. Fantastic rally again. And it's Andre that takes the early advantage now, 11 10. So this is game point. She doesn't get it, goes to 11 all. First to 13, and so on. So it's the Brit to serve. Nice goes into the diagonal channel. Is it a big celebration there as she now leads 12 11 and is one point away from going two sets up. Andre to go, goes into the corner, that will be retaken. Nice return. Picard trying to go for a bit more of a powerful shot and, and again just snapping back goes down the middle into the corner it's a fantastic return but not good enough and it is Picard who takes the second set 13-11 she's delighted gave it a massive fist bump and a massive cheer towards her coach and she'll be really pleased she had to come across a lot there to take that second set victory and she is now in the driving seat going in to the middle set number three so really positive stuff then thus far from both of these players. A really enjoyable fixture. And Emily Andre is proving why she is slowly but surely going up in those world rankings. She was number six in the world in class six back in July. So only a couple of months ago. She sits ninth currently. But if she can go far in this tournament, she'll be really pleased with her efforts as a Paralympics. In Paris, slowly approach on us. So off we go again now in set three. Really, Andre has to just go absolutely gun ho. What she did there with that kind of shot, ferocious effort. But she has to be controlled. She can't just hammer, which is why she now finds herself 2-0 down. And she does get back there. And forced error from Picard on the backhand. The difference here between these two players is Andre is really not using both sides of the paddle. That red side has got, I believe, a cord medium pinballs. Basically, if you use that side, that'll change the flight and direction of the ball. Which is what Felicity Picard keeps doing. She keeps switching from red to black to red to black. But she'll be noticing here, Andre unless she has to, is using that black side. She likes the firmness of it and the direction. She likes to know where it's going. And it is working for her at the moment. Three all the score. So we're back underway. 
following that short break. There's a nice response there from Felicity. Clicked it with the backhand. Forced another one of those errors from Andre. It's a nice rally that just misses out and Emily Andre calls a timeout. Clever time to do this. She finds herself 5-3 down in a must-win set. So she's got a minute now to talk to her coach. If she decides to cut it short, that means Felicity has to do that also. In a minute, just to talk with your coach and discuss from their side of things what they feel you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and what you need to change. It helps players immensely. And they only get one a game, so they have to tactically plan it. And I said I felt that was the right time for the Swede to do that. She lost a couple of points there in a manner that she will be disappointed with herself. Oh, now back, ready to go again from that serve. Nicely done from her. Not nice enough. She just seems a little bit hurried at the moment. She's even lost that one there as well from that serve. Just basically missed the ball as she went for it. So 7-3 down and now this is just frustration. Creeping in. And that's another really good return from Picard. 8-3 now she leads. And it's her serve. Oh, what a return. That was excellently done. One of the best shots of the game there from Andre. Arrowed it into the corner. And just too quick for the Brit to respond to. So wait for the score. Not serve. Now 8-5. And out of nowhere, Andre is slowly creeping back up into this. Next couple of points are decisive. And again, she wins another. 8-6. Unfortunate there. Couldn't quite get over the net. That's an important point for the Brit. She now leads by three. 9-6. Good serve. Rally down the middle. Enforcing those mistakes. She now leads 10 6. And this is not just set point, this is match point. And there we go. Fantastically done from Picard. No hesitation. And unfortunately for the Swede, Andre, she does lose her opening game. But. That's uh, three out of three Brits now on table six. Third of one up by three to zero. Didn't make it easier for herself, admittedly, but first game, you just want to get it out the way. You want to win. You want to get those first game nerves cleared. And the 29 year old does win three to zero against Emily Andre in our fourth game of the day.
welcome back then to our next game here on Court 6. And it's a fairly tasty one. Once again, we do have a GB athlete in Grace Williams. But she's up against the seventh in the world in Class 8, Julianne Wolf of Germany. So this will be no easy game for the 20-year-old Brit who's currently 19 in Class 8. So not too much of a difference, but definitely experience on Julianne Wolf's side. Well, she actually won these championships, did Wolf, back in 2017, back when the classes were a bit more mixed. They were 6-8. to eight. She won the gold, and since then, she has won an abundance of silver medals as well. Uh, she won a silver at the European Championships in 2019 and was runners-up in the doubles at the World Championships in 2022. Her last tournament before this one was the Para Open in Slovenia, where she picked up the bronze in the doubles, but did not pick up a medal in the singles. So, potentially... Some whispers going around that she may be past her prime, but the fact that she's still number seven in the world and still competing at the top of her game at 35 does show she's still got a lot more to give. Nicknamed Jewel, which obviously you don't need to be a genius to figure that one out. It's for short for Julianne. Um, back home, she's actually a scientific officer, which I find really fascinating with some of these athletes. They do have different jobs. They're not just completely devoted to para table tennis apparently Julianne Wolfe is also dedicated to the sciences and whatever that may hold well she's been playing for a number of years now her first medal came all the way back in 2010 in the Slovenia Open Gold Championships uh, Ever since then, 13 years on, she's still battling away and winning those gold medals. But different for Grace Williams. Of course, only 20 years of age. Her first medal came at the 2019 Dutch Open. And then, of course, following on from 2019, we went straight into a pandemic. So since then, she only actually started playing again in 2022 and winning medals. So... In terms of her actual overall experience, she's only got about two or three years of experience to her name. Well, she'll be hoping that she can impress here on the European stage and get herself as close as possible to Paris 2024. As that is definitely the objective for the Brit. We're off and underway then now. Fast rally already kicking off and... Good start from Williams. Already back level. She went with a forearm shot there. Not quite making it onto the table. So Wolf leads two to one. A few delicate shots going in here, and Wolf again coming out on top. These opening stages for her favourite Wolf. She just needs to feel comfortable and make sure that she doesn't do silly errors exactly like that. Actually, that's an unforced error. She shouldn't be hitting the internet. She should be comfortable getting it over the net. And on to the other side. So she'd be disappointed with that. Now will allow Williams to gain in confidence. What a shot. So Paul levels a three all. Talk about ferocious. So that level at three all. is 
Jones ticking over, doing what she can at the moment. She trails though by five points to three. It's her turn to serve. And she just goes for a little bit too much power there, forcing it into the net. Still been a bright spot from the Brit, but that's a good response there from Wolf to go back into a four-point advantage. Now that lead is starting to be slowly extended. It does give me just a quick moment to welcome back to the table. Farrell Anthony, how are you, mate? I'm all right, sir. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Joins us. Back on the commentary as Wolf is slowly growing in confidence, but she does lose out on the point there. With eight for the score. And Grace Williams, another one of those Brits who is delighted to be here in front of a home crowd. It's the first tournament she's played in front of a British audience. Friends and family here to Shearer along the way. I think Grace will probably just be a bit nervous um, in this first game. It's quite a daunting thing to come into Europeans and you know try to perform. Absolutely, and she started off quite well with a couple of. Decent sized rallies with Wolf, but since I'm at the midway point of this first set, the German has just dominated and letting that experience shine on through. The score at 10 4, already on set point. It's a, it's a silly mistake, really, there from Wolf. As she slipped taking the serve. At 10-6, there's a little bit of hope here as both of them just have a quick uh, break and just reassess things. Yeah, so they'll take a minute and um, for the for, for Grace Williams, the coach will just be telling, uh, trying to calm her down a bit and just to give her a bit of confidence for the second game. Because uh, sometimes the first game can run away from you if you are a bit nervous and he'll realise that. So... Um, It'll be just a case of trying to get her in the right state of mind so she, she believes she can take the second game. Yeah, there are definitely bright sparks shown in that opening set. And like you say, it's those opening game nerves as well for her. And she's up against a, a really good player in Julianne Wolf, who's currently number seven in her class. But she's not particularly had the... Best of years. She hasn't picked up a medal yet in 2023 as the 35-year-old. Whereas Grace Williams, as I was alluding to just before you rejoined us, she's only really had two and a half years of actual tournament experience due to COVID. So this is a really big stage for her to come onto. And of course, it being your home tournament as well, as well as that added a little bit of pressure. It's nice because you have your family to support, but you also, you don't want to let them down either. No. But hopefully she'll she'll turn things around in this game. And she's bouncing around on her feet, so she's not she's still you know, she's obviously fairly confident. It's Wolf to serve then. Ready. Point to the good. She seemed relatively happy with uh, that point there. It gave it a little bit of a fist pump. We've seen a few of those antics from the players so far today. Mali Andre last game from Sweden was really giving it some umph every time she won a point. That's a great serve from Grace there. A lot of side spin with top spin. And it went off the end. It's good. Well, it's pulled a back level. Oh. 
just needs to remain focused. Even if she does lose a couple of points like she just did there, she knows that she has the ability to be able to get back into it. It's a good serve from Wolf then. Lots of top spin on the ball uh, with a bit of side. And Grace just mid-read it. That's that uh, six-point mark. They're both just taking a second before coming back to the table with Williams to serve. You know, just that experience coming through at the moment for the German. Lead is not quite half, but it's now Williams just slowly back into it, which will definitely help with her confidence. And they we're picking up the pace a little bit there, maybe a little bit too quick for Williams to respond to, and she loses another point there. Seven three, the margin in this second set. It's a nice serve, that's a fantastic shot as well. Coming back to the right Great of shot. Wolf. Really strong from it. We need to see more of that, Grace Williams, throughout this tournament. And fantastic that's again, good. that's, that's good. excellent. Really good, and you can tell the way she's bouncing up and down, she's confident, she's feeling herself now. Really yeah. good effort. I think she's just trying to keep herself up it for the game. And I think um, that combination of shots then with a, a forehand winner down the line was very, very good. And again. So this is the Grace Williams that we want to see. One that's, you know, she's trying to attack the ball and being really positive with her shots. She's managed to get herself right back into it. Wolf very happy with that one. She knows how important that point could be. Just edging it out now to 86. A really strong return that Wolf did ever so well. And to re extend her lead to that three point margin that Grace Williams had done so well to fight back to. And once again, celebrating that point. One more, and that will have. Set two wrapped up, and then it's such a strong uphill battle there for Williams to try and get herself back into it. There we go, at the end of set two. Yeah. Williams with a lot of work to do, but a lot of really promising signs there. Absolutely, and I think uh, that's what um, her coach, Sean Marples, will be telling her that, you know, that, you know, she's still got three games to, to, to potentially play and she just has to sort of build on what on her shots and have confidence that she can um, win the third game, the fourth and the fifth. And he'll just be giving her sort of lots of positive um, reminders about that. And they're just deep in discussion at the moment, yeah. as is Wolf with her coach, Oliver Weber. Both work together at BSG Offenburg over in Germany. And uh, Wolf's motto, it's it's not one for the faint-hearted. It's quite simply just fight. So she's a confident woman. Yeah. She's one that likes to win. Williams just having to gear herself up to return to the table. And she's taking the full minute as well. In every single game we've had so far, this is game number five. In all the other games, it's been straight sets, three to zero for all of our competitors. 
Essentially, we're about to see that for the fifth time in a row. Williams for GBR to serve. It's a great shot. She does lead from the first shot for the first time in this game. A little bit careless from her there, so she loses the point, but already back underway and again straight into the netting that time. More Wolf now in the lead and ready to serve. Maybe a bit of frustration coming out here. The three on the score. And again, this has been a bit of a horror set so far from Williams and with how well she did in set two, which is on quite quickly in the opposite direction here in this third set. Yeah, that's why she's taking the time out. Yeah, that's why the coaches call the time out. I think um, you know it's the, it's a point of no return now. She loses this game, she loses the match. So um, he'll be trying to stem that flow. Once again, a deep in discussion. Be interesting to see if they take the full minute again, or she wants to come back to the table early. Wolf seemingly composed and calm at the moment on the sideline as she takes the walk back to the table. She's ready to go. But once again, Williams looks to be taking the most of that 60 seconds. Like you say, she'll want to at least end this set. Let's say she will lose. She'll want to at least end it on a positive note or as well as she can. Because yeah. she's still got some more group games for her to do something at this tournament with. That's better. That's a lot better from Grace Williams there. She played the serve into the middle rather than to the to the corner, and sort of made made Wolf pay a weaker return. Hence, she was able to get a weak return and smash the ball for a winner, which is good. We need to see more of that from the Brit. Unfortunately, that time she just misses the table on her return. So, Wolf once again to serve. Oh, and she got lucky there, Wolf, and she acknowledged her good fortune as well. Uh, just clipped the edge of the table. Slowly but surely being extended against Williams. That's a really nice serve. And we need to see more of that from uh, Grace Williams because she's she utilising the whole range of the table for a service to make it more difficult for Wolves to, to actually get the ball. Nice rally taking place here. And that's a fantastic point for Wolf. She cheers in jubilation. She knows how important that is for the complexion of this game. She leads 8-3. Only a few points to go to wrap up this match. She'll need to do a little bit better than that, though. Yeah. A little bit careless. So they take both taking a towel break. Um, and Grace Williams really needs to have, um, she could do with just winning these two points now. Good serves and good follow-up. Just to put Wolf under a little bit of pressure. And that's brilliant. She did it with backhand then, it's good. And the signs are there, like you say, she has to win these two points and really give herself a fighting chance. So this is a big serve for her, utilising the whole table, putting it back in there, and does win it as well. Absolutely. So really good work. So 8-6 the score. Oh. 
Williams now on that first serve. So it's a big moment in the match. But uh, and careless there from Wolf has just done it a couple of times in this game. And that's just allowed Grace Williams a really good opportunity from a double serve here. On this first one, she's keeping the rally going before going with a ferocious shot back and again. That's brilliant from Grace Williams there. That is much, much better. Yeah. Nine eight the score. A chance to level things up here in the third set. Yeah, by that sheer of Wolf, you know that point is ever so important. 10 8. And as they both just go for a quick tower break, it is set point, but it's also match point here for Grace. So, what do you do in her situation? You know what's about to happen, you know what's going to come. How do you somehow flip the table and get that well, she point? She has to be positive in her mindset that she can actually still win the game. And that is one a hell of a finish straight down the middle like an arrow and it is three sets to zero final score it is Wolf that beats GV's Grace Williams and I feel like she'll be somewhat disappointed with herself but also a lot of positives there she really yeah. improved as well in that third set yeah I think um, she, she she takes um stock and everything she'll probably realize that she probably wasn't as positive as she could have been on certain balls but um nerves could have played a part as well but you know like you say wolf is a very good player very accomplished and um you know she you know but grace has still got some games left to play it's still the group stage so it's not all over just yet no absolutely well we've got another brit in action coming up Shortly here on table six, that's back into group three. And we have Ashley Facey taking on Ander Sipas of Spain.
once again a warm welcome to you all here. Game six at the Para Table Tennis Championship 2023. European edition, of course, here in Sheffield Steel City. Well, we have two more good competitors coming your way now in Anders Sipas and Ashley Facey. And once again, I am delighted to be joined by Morel Anthony for this upcoming game. First of all, how are you? I'm good today. Looking forward to this match. It'll be very explosive. Both left-handed players, both attack, um, very attack-minded. Um, powerful forehands and backhands. And in terms of Ashley Facey, we were discussing him a little bit off air about his sort of peculiar route into table tennis let's say because he started in table tennis didn't he and then he took a bit of time out and went into cycling and now he's come back to the sport yeah I think um, an opportunity came um, they spotted him he thought that he'd be good at cycling and everything and he at the time I think he he wasn't quite sure whether he wanted to carry on with table tennis so having a break probably did him good because he went to cycling and then he sort of got his hunger back for table tennis yeah, and he's 28 years of age and He's had, uh, I'd say, medium success thus far in his uh, table tennis career. In the last couple of months, he's won a bronze and a gold. Minor medals, albeit, but uh, that was in the singles and doubles at the Czech Para Open. But in terms of major medals, when you compare that to some of the other Brits, it's not quite reaching the heights with a bronze and a silver at the two previous European championships. What will he be hoping for in this tournament? Is he just looking to try and get as far as he can or is he looking for that qualification for next year? I think he'll, he'll obviously be focused on seeing whether he can win it or not but I think for Ashley I think the most important thing is that he's enjoying his table tennis again and he you know he, he had a, a ti some time out and sometimes when you have time out I mean the, the, the game moves on but then obviously he's, he, he has high expectations of himself to do stuff and, uh, and I think that's a good thing because it keeps him you know focused on what he needs to do well, he's up against in his opening game of the tournament uh, a very good young up and coming player 19 years of age he's currently number two ranked in this ninth class so he's got a lot coming his way as Ashley Fasic to deal with but we're about to get underway that serve. It's already a really strong yep. shot there. You see, he'll favour his forehand, actually. He's very quick on his feet. So he will try and get his forehand in when he can. Yeah, we're definitely <laughs> right in the pre-build-up to this. You said it was going to be ferocious and <laughs> relatively fast. And already with the opening points, I have to completely agree. Really going with those powerful shots. It's Sipas that takes the lead now, two to one. Bellowed with that gutsy cheer. And again, cheering as he wins an all important point. And he needs already my three to one in the opening minute of this game. It's a great serve from Ashley there, very deceptive. Didn't come right down, he just put this thing called float, what we call a float serve in. Well, as they take a tower break, talk to us a bit more about this serving style. Is that something that we could be expecting to see a little bit more Ashley Facey use in this game? Well, he'll use a variety of serves to try and deceive his opponent to try and get in, but both players will do that. Um, like I said, they're both attacking-minded players. Um, very powerful, they've got strong physiques and everything. So they'll try and utilise that in terms of trying to win the points as well. Ooh, face it, just missing the table there. It's been a really strong start from the Spaniard. And the C-Pass. Not letting anything phase him, a 19-year-old. This is his first European Championships. Leads by six points to three with 
for Britt Facey to serve. It's a very Again, powerful he moves shot. round so quickly, so quick on his feet to get the forehand in. Um, but he was ready for the next shot as well, which is good. Extra point back in it now. And a bit of that renewed confidence. He's gone for the rally, but just missing the table there on his return. So 7 4 the score in this opening set. Just clipping the edge of the table yeah. there. He did, yeah. He clipped the edge of the table, but he acknowledged his good fortune straight away, which is what we like to see in table tennis. If you get a bit fortunate, just to acknowledge it. I mean, some players don't do so. A point to point, them. So, but um, you know, overall, most people will acknowledge their good fortune. Yeah, it's nice to see good sportsmanship. Yes, definitely. between the uh, between these two players, and we've seen it already all throughout the morning in this early afternoon in Sheffield. Well, that's a fantastic return shot there. Across the uh, table it went. And such velocity behind that. Again. So both Thomas players... Facey. As you can see, both players are, are very strong when they get in. Both of them really starting to get into the groove now. Only two points separate them. It's now extended to three points in the Spaniards' favour. Now allowed the Spaniard to go within one point of claiming this set. And that is a fantastic way to wrap up that set. 11 to 6. And of course, be the happier of the two players. But at times there, Facey was right on it and did really well to just deal with this combative style of Ander Pass. Yes, it's um, it's very difficult, especially when you're sort of playing with fine margins and he knows that he can't play any weak balls. So he's trying to get in and play strong balls because uh, C-Pass is doing really well. And I think um, in terms of the moving forward, I think, you know, Ashley made a few mistakes and he'll want to sort of get rid of those so he can be a bit more competitive in this second game. Yeah, he'll be hoping to at least win this second set because, like we've said, in every other game so far today, once you go two games down, it's such a difficult situation for you to be in because you have to go gun ho you have to chuck the kitchen sink at it, and that leaves you susceptible to mistakes and to, of course, some unforced errors. So, Macy has got a lot to do. But he's definitely shown that he's got the capabilities to rival and the sea pass here. No. Opening point going in the direction of the Spaniard. His first two points. away from Facey. It's a great serve. Really wide to the left-hander's backhand. Just going for a little bit too much power there. Not enough accuracy. Now again, and from all four serves from C pass here, I've managed to win those points so far. Five one. 
And the sea pass leaves. And it's uh, not been the most idealist situation so far for the Brit. He's got a lot of work to do to get back into this. And with shots like that, that'll help him along the way tremendously. I think there, he went for accuracy rather than just power, pure power. I think he went for placement and that sometimes is a good policy. There's a few times in this set, at least, that he has chosen power over precision and it's not gone particularly his way. It's a good touch there, Bo. Um, touched it short over the net. 6-3 the score. And that's a really clever play there, just getting into the near side of facing. Momentum is grown with the Spaniard, who has a five-point advantage. Yeah, he's yeah. making a lot of um, errors. Um, is actually at the moment. Um, you just need to try and cut those down a bit. And he's grown a lot of frustration. You can just tell by the look on his face and his old body language. He loses another point there. And he's about to lose this set and just the way his shoulders are dropping. He looks frustrated with himself and his performance. And there we go. That's that set already over and done with. He is 2-0 down. Yeah, what, what, what his coach will be trying to tell Ashley now is to just calm down a bit and, you know, sort of utilise all the skills that he's got to try and get back into this game. Um, I think sometimes, like he, in, in that game, he sort of went for power rather than precision. And, and I think sometimes placing the ball is just as good as a powerful shot sometimes. Absolutely. Sometimes if you're going for the precision, the opposition player might not always be in the exact position he needs to be to be able to respond to it you might be expecting that power which is why you should sometimes try and mix those shots up and that's something that face has not really done too much the one time he did go for accuracy over power he won the point and he's going to have to do something quite remarkable in this third set yeah i mean see is a very good player but um you know um actually he'll come out and he'll he'll try and do the best he can um I think he'll still, he'll still believe he can turn it around. Uh -huh. He will get us off and underway in this third set. That's a good start from Vasey. More of the same, please and thank you. And that's better. Forcing those errors there. And that'll do him the world of good, confidence-wise. into the net there. That gives the Spanish 19-year-old his first point of this third set. Right there, we're back level. Two apiece. in an uncomfortable position now, far away from the table. Unfortunate for him, he doesn't quite manage to arch it back. He was doing well from that distance that he'd been forced into. But from 2-0 down, Cipas now leads. Oh, six points gone, quick tower break for them. But, uh, it's been better so far, hasn't it, from facing this? Yeah, he started set. very well this game. Yeah. 
again. He's just missed the table there. Trying to go for a bit more power over that position. Which won't particularly help Masses. He's now got work to do with his serves. We'll call the time out now, I think. You're all right, yeah. yes. Uh, he has been called. Yeah. And he just looks really frustrated he at does. himself. And um, what um, his coach will be telling him was just to try and calm down a bit. Because he, if, he, if he gets frustrated too much, he's not, he's not going to get himself back into this game. And he's starting to lose his call a little bit, which is understandable given the situation. That sea pass at the moment, 19 years of age, fresh faced. And that is saying something. He is looking as calm as you like right now on our screens. Just in dialogue with his coach, but uh, well, just by the, his entire demeanour, you wouldn't really think he's in the middle of playing a, a game at the European Championships. Seems very calm. Both of them more or less utilise that full 60 seconds. So face it to serve. 6-3 down. This has to be... Come back here. Well, it's always good to win uh, the point after the, the break. And he's won the first point, so that's good. Straight after getting himself put back into it. That four-point margin opens up seven for the score. And again, just those little errors creeping in. A bit of frustration for Facey. Still lingering around. And like you were saying last game with William C. Had to put herself in the mindset where she was never going to lose and she had to keep thinking that she could still win. And with shots yeah. like that, that's kind of mentality we need to see more yeah, of. Yeah, that's it. It was a great backhand down the line. Oh, so unlucky. But that is a fantastic shot from Seapass. Just forced facing so far away from the table. So what we probably call no man's land, really. Gave him an almost impossible task to respond. And the score's 9-6, so... It's not quite over yet for Ashley. He's holding on. These next few points are critical. Well, that'll give him a bit of confidence. He's with his serves to come now as well. Two points in that face it to serve. Now we're on to set point and match point now. Got to be perfect from Facey. And it isn't, unfortunately, it's Seapass who takes the victory. 3 to 0. A really strong performance from the 19-year-old. Opening up his account at these European Championships with a fine, fine victory against Great Britain's Ashley Facey. He's got a lot of work to do. But, yeah, uh, yeah overall, Seapass completely bossed it. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was too good for Ashley today. But, um, actually, you know, he'll be a bit frustrated he hasn't played his best table tennis. But he's got, he'll have a, you know, he's got a couple, I think he's probably got another couple of games to play in the group stage so it's not all lost at the moment so um, hopefully you know he can turn everything around well our next game up here on table six just before our lunch break we have the Netherlands Kelly Van Zon who's taking on Norway's Nora Cornelissian
the umpire Alan Thomas from England. Our table 11, women's singles class 11, Leah Fernie from France, Ewa Chichowska from Poland, the umpire is Jonathan Whitaker from Scotland. Well, a big warm welcome back to Table 6. This is Game 7 of the day here in Sheffield. This, of course, is the 2023 European Para Table Tennis Championships. And if you are joining us for the first time today, we give you the warmest of welcomes and we hope you are looking forward to what we hope will be a fantastic encounter between Kenny Van Zon of the Netherlands and Nora Corneliussen of Norway. Well, some introductions for you. My name is Elliot Stockdown. Alongside me, I'm delighted to be joined by former cerebral palsy world champion Farrell Anthony. How are you, mate? And how are you uh, expecting this game to play out? I am very good, thank you. It's been a great morning. We've had some great games. Um, I'm expecting Kelly to be very strong. Um, she's the world number one. She's um, she's a multiple major champion. Um, she's got very very good um, craft around the table. Um, but I think the um, I can't, I can't see name. sorry Corneliusen. I've not I've never seen a play, so um, I don't know what she's she's like. She looks like she's left-handed. So um, it's. Um, Kelly Van Zandt been around for a long time. I think Kelly play. So hopefully, though, the um, Corneliusen will do uh, really well and we'll have a competitive game. Yeah, well, this is Van Zandt's 20th year of playing para table tennis. Their first tournament back in 2003, the IV Open International in Villa de Bilbao. So it's been a long, long career of hers, now 35 years of age, but still absolutely smashing it as the world number one can you see anyone actually stopping her this week or do you think she'll be going off to the 2024 olympics as european champion <laughs> I, do you know i think um the thing is because she's played such a long time sometimes when she goes on the table people feel a bit nervous straight off and i don't think you, you know you've got to have a you've got to believe that you can win but they have such an aura because you are playing the world number one yeah. But, um, you know, you have to believe he can win and hopefully um, Corneliusen will do um, just that and we'll have a competitive game. Well, fingers crossed. Uh, Corneliusen, 24 years of age, currently ranked number 10 in her class. That's class 7. Her first tournament back in 2016, the Jano Masters Junior Open. And in the last couple of years, just before... Covid and of course the pandemic, she did quite well at the European Championships 2019 2017, picking up two bronze medals. And already Kelly's like she's showing her dominance with her, her forehand topspin, which is probably her strongest shot. It's her serve once again, as we are now off and underway. And she claims the point. Puts herself in an early 2-0 lead. This has been the kind of start we probably expected from Corneliusen. Meaning a bit under pressure. Those first game nerves against the world number one. I've had a lot in basketball over the years where players walk onto the field next to the likes of LeBron James and just don't quite know how to act around them and could very much be the case here for Nora Corneliuson. She has managed to get a point back, 5-1 the score. Should be hoping that this next six points that come her way are a little bit better. And that was a little bit better from her. Oh, 
And again, just forcing world number one, Van Zon, into a few errors there, hitting the net in two shots in a row. I'll make that three shots in a row. And from 5 0 down, already pegged back to 5 4. This has been a really strong comeback from the Norwegian. It is. And there we go, back level to 5 all. Yeah. Really wonderfully done. And she's done it being positive. She's been positive in her attitude towards the shots and things, and that's really good. Actually, that comeback has slowly been halted by Kelly Van Zon, who's she now leads seven points to five. That positivity still needs to be there for Nora. Not a delicate serve. Oh, a nice rally since, but just going down the middle and into the netting. Just to get a point back there. Yeah, Kelly's looking to get in strong on her forehand and her backhand. And if she misses, she'll still go for the same shot if she thinks it's there. Well, there's a bit of a reckless arm just being waved out there towards the ball. Makes it 10-6, that four-point margin as we enter the latter stages of this opening set. And Van Zon does indeed win that first set by 11 points to six. But there was a lot, a lot of positives there, it has to be said, for the Norwegian. And probably a little bit more than we actually maybe anticipated going into this game. Yeah, I think obviously she got she had a slow start, but I think again it, it probably nerves um, came into play. But then she settled down and she won three or four points in a row. But then it's, the game went away again. But um, the thing is about somebody like Kelly Van Zorn, who's a world number one. She sometimes they have um, when they feel under a bit of pressure, they have another level that they can go to to make sure they close the game out. You mentioned uh, that earlier, funny enough, about the other world number one uh, for GB, uh, Will Bailey. You mentioned that you know he doesn't didn't have to go on 100%. And maybe that's what Van Zon is doing here. Maybe she's just at that 60, 70%. She's still got that extra 30% room if she needs to, to get into that first gear and yeah. march on. Like all good champions, they'll try and conserve what they can as much as they can. But... If they feel a bit under threat, then they've got a different level they can go to. Um, and it's up to the other player. I mean, it's quite amazing how, um, you know, if you are a world number one and you're playing someone who's lower ranked, if you are three or four points in front, you can look fantastic. But if you're only one point in front, you will make errors as well because, you, you know, you'll feel under pressure as well. So... Off and underway then in this second set and a wild arm being flailed out there from Corneliuson. Such was the power coming in from Van Zon's effort. A replay of it here, just spooned off. Yeah. She yeah. generates quite a lot of spin, Kelly Van Zon. It's very difficult, very difficult. So she goes again and yeah. similar start to this set. As in the first, where Cornelison's just not settled. Which is allowing hands on a confidence to do shots like that. So three to the good at the moment. Cornelison's got a lot of work to do, but shots like that yeah. are just I mean, unstoppable. Yeah, see, I mean, she went to a four and then she went down the backhand. She's using the lines really well. Really well. Timeout called there by 
Cornelison. Seemingly like reluctantly. I mean, it might be early, but I think the coach probably reckons, she probably recognises that she can't let this game get too far away from her. Um, this particular game, because um, you know she needs to try and get back into it as quickly as she can. As you can see on our screens, really deep in conversation. There's Nora and her coach, and Van Zon returns to the table bright and early. You get that four minutes, but to two. I have caught the time out to end it. Cornelison is now back to the table and ready to go again. 3 1 the score to Manzon. <laughs> 4 1 now. A very good top spin side spin serve there. Uh, Cornelison just misread it. But it was a great forehand from Cornelison though. Really strong and powerful. We we'll need to see more of that in the latter stages of this second set. And it was again, again much better. Yeah. She she once she gets that one point, she just seems to gain that confidence all of a sudden. Yes, that she, she can actually put some pressure on Kelly Van Zon. But again, she's using the, the, the variation in a side spin and a top spin to good effect to win the point. That was a, a wild effort there from... <laughs> Van Zon, it's almost like she was aiming for one at one of the other tables and one of the other courts. That went absolutely flying. Yeah. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think anyone really knows where that ball went. But uh, no. Wow, that was nice from Cordelius and putting her under pressure again and forcing that error, of course. Yes. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that <laughs> that trickled on over I mean, the into, into the third the court. Right. Yeah. So six four the score, and Norwegian will be hoping that. Which one does that a few more times in this set? And again, just maybe it's concentration or just like a belief in herself. But at times she's really shown that she can compete, but then at others, so silly errors that are just starting to creep in again. Yeah, it's maintaining that level though, that's the thing. You've got to try and maintain it. And sometimes that can be really difficult. Nine four the score, and this set is seemingly getting away from her. Another good forehand though from Cornelison. Very good. So she's it's in a locker. She she can utilise it. It's just getting that consistency. That's right. Hasn't played too badly in this game at all. And there she was going for a uh, serve down the line, which is always tricky. She's trying to get it right on the white line to make it more difficult for uh, Kelly Van Zon to get the ball. So she just missed it. So she's obviously thinking quite well in terms of trying to make it more difficult for the world number one to win points. Yeah. She's got a lot to do now in set three. She is 2-0 down. But, like you say, she's got the right mindset. She starts to think a little bit more about the kind of shot she wants to take on to try and catch off Kelly Van Zon. Yeah. And um, now she's, basically, she's on her own now because she hasn't got a timeout. So um, she's used the timeout now. So um, this is the third game. It's going to be the third game. So she's going to have to work everything out herself. She's got to give it her absolute all here. She knows if that she loses this set and she will have lost the game. And there's no shame in that when you're playing up against the world number one. But she wants to absolutely test herself against the world's best. And if she can force 
Maybe one more set out of it. And I think she'll be absolutely delighted. Yeah. I think she's got everything. She's got all the tools that she needs to be able to win a game. But it's, it's like I said before, it's about consistency. You know, you can't just do it for two points. You've got to do it for five or six points. Oh, she's still only 24. And like we alluded to earlier, she's only got a small amount of tournaments under her belt. Yeah. I mean, there, Kelly, it was the length of the ball as well as the spin just were too much. That's a nice uh, mini rally there and forcing hands on into a mini error. And that was a great serve from Kelly Van Zon there, right into the um, Gust um, Cornelison's body. And again, Cornelison right at the start of the set, just like in set one and set two. Just struggling to come alive and taking a while to warm up. Just yeah. crossing a point. She's giving Kelly a lot of long balls she needs to shorten her serve a bit because Kelly's ready for the long ball and she's, she's put so much spin on the ball that it puts her puts Cornelison under pressure perhaps there's uh, maybe just pulling a little bit too much respect really plenty of work to do and like you say she's on her own no time out it's a really nice return from Van Zon. Somehow got there, still going. <laughs> what a point. She's so good when the ball, when she's trying to retrieve the ball, because she puts so much spin on it. And she goes again. She is feeling it right now. She's in the groove. Didn't quite work out for her that time. No. But she will go again. And you can tell she's just really enjoying playing, which is always great to see. She can't get too complacent. And off the side it goes there. Just to give Anzan a little bit more breathing room. Which will help massively. Oh, it's a fantastic return, but uh, not quite. Well, I know she'd managed to snap back yeah, and but get a return on it, but just missing the table. Yeah, but that was a great backhand from Cornelius. And great backhand. Again, and 7 again. 5 now. It's coming back. Yeah, so she played that into Kelly's body then, made it more difficult for her to, to get the ball. So what she'll need to focus on more. Trying to make Van Zon uncomfortable. Not put it into an area where she's got a chance of being able to retrieve it well. And put her under as much pressure as you can. Now that scoreboard is ticking upwards in favour of Van Zon at 9-5. Which means there is not much time left. Cornelius to try and do things maybe that she would have done in the first couple of sets because she seemingly has learnt along the way here yeah like I say it's, um, it's trying to maintain that consistency of, of, of winning points as well there we go she actually apologises for that she understands when you say her fortune but there we go at the end of oh, three sets it's three straight sets once again and it is the world number one Kelly Van Zon who defeats Nora Corneliuson in three straight sets to end off what has been a really entertaining first seven games of this 2023 European para table tennis. Plenty of action still going on on our other courts. But from the both of us, we're going to take a short break now. And we'll be back at around three o'clock for game eight.